cerebral circulation cerebral circulation is the movement of blood through a network of arteries and veins supplying the brain it is the movement of blood through network of arteries and veins supplying the brain arteries deliver oxygenated blood glucose and other nutrients veins carry used blood from the brain to the heart also it removes carbon dioxide lactic acid and other metabolic products so cerebral circulation consists of arteries and venous drainage what is the rate of cerebral blood flow in the adult human being the rate is 75 ml per minute or it is about 15 percentage of cardiac output the average perfusion is 50 ml per 100 g of brain per minute 15 50 ml of blood per 100 g of brain per minute now let us see about the arterial supply the blood supply to the brain is divided into anterior and posterior segments or anterior circulation and posterior circulation so this is the combination of anterior circulation and posterior circulation from here below is the posterior circulation and from here upward is the anterior circulation so let us see the posterior circulation first the posterior circulation it is by two vertebral arteries from both side of the body these vertebral arteries are branches of subclavian arteries this vertebral artery gives a branch called the posterior inferior cerebellar artery posterior inferior cerebellar artery on both side you have here and you have here both arteries continues and together to form only one single common artery that is called the basilar artery it is called the basilar artery here then the first branch of basilar artery is anterior inferior cerebellar artery on both side this side and this side again it continues and gives several other smaller branches called the pontine perforating artery pontine perforating artery here also it gives another important branch called the superior cerebellar artery again one more important branch called the posterior in cerebral artery posterior cerebral artery so the posterior circulation is by vertebral artery posterior inferior cerebral artery basilar artery and its branches like anterior inferior cerebral artery pontine artery superior cerebral artery and posterior cerebral artery so this is posterior circulation then coming to the anterior circulation anterior circulation comes from internal carotid arteries anterior circulation comes from internal carotid arteries on both side internal carotid artery gives a small branch called ophthalmic artery another small branch called cortical artery again another important artery called the anterior cerebral artery and it continues as middle cerebral artery so internal carotid artery it enters the brain it gives ophthalmic artery cortical artery anterior cerebral artery and it continues to the brain are as middle cerebral artery on both side then the middle cerebral arteries on both side are connected by another artery called the anterior communicating artery so this is about the anterior circulation so anterior circulation is by internal carotid artery ophthalmic artery cortical artery anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery also both middle cerebral arteries are sorry anterior cerebral arteries are connected by anterior communicating artery But that is about the anterior circulation this anterior circulation and posterior circulation are connected by posterior communicating artery anterior circulation and posterior circulation are connected by posterior communicating artery so this form a circle and that circle is called the circle of willis this is the circle of willis 
This is at the bottom of the brain or at the base of the brain. At the base of the brain or at the circle of the is the internal carotid artery branch in smaller artery that supply about 80% of the cerebrum. So 80% of the cerebrum comes from the which artery called the internal cerebral artery. We have already seen the anterior circulation is the blood supply to the anterior portion of the brain including eyes. It is supplied by internal carotid artery, anterior cerebral artery, anterior communicating artery and the middle cerebral artery. Posterior circulation is the supply to the posterior portion of the brain including occipital lobe, cerebellum and brainstem. It is supplied by the vertebral artery, posterior inferior cerebellar artery, basilar artery, anterior inferior cerebellar artery, condyne branches, superior cerebellar artery, posterior cerebellar artery and posterior communicating artery. The second part of the cerebral circulation is the venous drainage. First part was the arterial supply that we have seen and anterior and posterior circulation. Now let us come to the venous drainage. It includes two subdivisions and the deep system. So, venous drainage consists of superficial system and a deep system. Superficial system is composed of dural venous sinuses. Superficial system consists of dural venous sinuses. There are five dural venous sinuses. They are superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus, straight sinus, transverse sinus and the sigmoid sinus. The five dural venous sinuses which form superficial system of the brain, venous drainage system of the brain. The sigmoid sinus continue to form two jugular veins on both sides. Internal jugular vein joins with the its superior vena cava and that empties into right atrium. So this is in detail of the picture of the Dural venous sinus. As you have seen, this is the first dural venous sinus, the superior sagittal sinus, which is the prominent dural venous sinus. The second one is the inferior sagittal sinus. So, this superior sagittal sinus empties at a point called the confluence of sinus. Inferior sagittal sinus joins with the, a vein called a great cerebral vein. And it continues as straight sinus, the third dural venous sinus. Then, the confluence from the confluence of sinuses, we have the transverse sinus, which continues as sigmoid sinus, the fifth dural sinus. Sigmoid sinus continues to form internal jugular vein, which empties into superior vena cava. Now, let us see. Deep venous drainage. The deep venous drainage is primarily composed of traditional veins from the deep structures of brain. They together form vein of gallon. So all veins from deeper part of brain together form the vein of gallon. Vein of gallon is also called a great cerebral vein. Then this vein of gallon or great cerebral vein joins with the inferior sagittal sinus to form straight sinus. It meets at the confluence of sinus, as I have mentioned earlier, continues as transverse sinus, sigmoid sinus, and the internal jugular vein. That is about the deep venous drainage of the brain. This is the schematic representation of the brain venous drainage system. So you have dural venous sinuses, superior sagittal sinus emptying into confluence of sinus, inferior sagittal sinus form straight sinus, meet at confluence of sinus, it continues as transverse sinus, sigmoid sinus and finally drain into internal jugular vein. Deep traditional veins of the brain together form vein of gallon and meet at inferior sagittal sinus and it empties into straight sinus and continues like this. Now let us see some of the factors 
determining cerebral blood flow. There are three factors. Viscosity of blood, diameter of blood vessel and the cerebral perfusion pressure. Viscosity of blood, diameter and the cerebral perfusion pressure. Few points about the diameter of blood vessels. Cerebral blood vessels are able to change the blood flow through them by altering their diameters in a process called autoregulation. What is autoregulation? That means blood vessels constrict when the systemic blood pressure is raised and dilate when it is lowered. When arterial BP goes high, there is constriction of cerebral blood vessel and when the BP is low, dilation of cerebral blood vessels. That is called autoregulation. Also, arterioles constrict and dilate in response to different chemical concentration. For example, when the level of carbon dioxide is high, cerebral blood vessels dilate. When there is high level of carbon dioxide, cerebral blood vessels dilate. When there is lower level of carbon dioxide, cerebral blood vessels constrict. That is about the change in the diameter of blood vessels by all. Next about the cerebral blood perfusion pressure. The short form is CPP, cerebral perfusion pressure. Then what it is? It is the net pressure of blood flow into the brain. It is determined by body's blood pressure. The equation is MAP minus ICP. CPP equals MAP minus ICP. In normal individuals, the normal CPP should be above 50 mm Hg and the normal ICP should be below 15 mm Hg. That is in brief about cerebral circulation. Thank you.